Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today I'm showing you how to make this. So it's a uh, part of what I'm calling the milestone shakers. So it's a shaker. There's just no topper, like there's no stick that goes in the cake, but um, it does sand. It has the little, um, this is for my daughter starting kindergarten. I'm super sad that I don't get to take her to her first day of school. So her school is, the mascot is the Colts. It's a little horse little pony so here's um and the colors are blue and white so we have this on a slider we have an apple on a swivel we have a um an envelope that has a slit to keep it closed but can open fully um i plan on writing a little note to her maybe ask her a few silly questions etc and just a bunch of cute little things to put next to her desk as she starts her day um, little stars, the crayons, everything with colors. It's just um, super, super cute. This goes, what we're, what I'm showing you today is going to very much match what I have done in the past, which was her first tooth milestone shaker. So um, it, there's a lot of um, technical parts in here that's super easy, but I wanna show you how to do it. I mean. There are things that I didn't do when I first started that would have made my life so much easier. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna show you really quickly. This, These are all the images that I use. So I have it here, it's an image. You can always pause me and write everything down. I'm, in the past, I had uploaded, showed you how to upload or find each image. I won't be showing you how to find each image today. I will show you just one because there's so many things that I wanna do to each one of the images that, um, I don't want to make this like a two hour long video. So, all right. Um, okay, so pause me if you need to. The Charlotte font is from DeFont. It's free, it's feeling sweet. Um, font bundle, I got Happy Popcorn, which is for kindergarten. And I absolutely love this font. There's a free version, which I believe then, you know, you can't use it and sell it in your products. And then the paid version. So I will send you a link for the paid version because I get a little part if you buy that one. Um, and all right let's get started so let me make this smaller all right so i brought in every image so far if i make this really small you can see all the images are over here the only one that i didn't bring in and i forgot to list here was i didn't realize forgot that the crayon is actually two images so the first image for the crayon that i have listed here is just the colored piece of it so with no full background, okay? So this is how you're going to look up each one of these images. You're gonna to go to image, and over here, make sure you add the pound sign, and it's um, MC0BDA23. All right, here's the outline, and that's gonna be important. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to turn this one into a print image. Sorry. I mean, oh, it's because I, let me ungroup it. For now, I'm going to turn this into a print image so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, so, okay, it's not letting me do it. So let me delete that. And did I already do what I said? No, I don't know why it's not letting me do it. Okay, we'll just ignore it for now. Let's look at all these images and kind of piece things together. I'll take you to Ink Space, Ink Space, Inkscape later. Um, but right now, let's just kind of build it as much as we can to get this. So these are all images from Design Space. The only one that's not is the school bus I got from Creative Fabrica. I really like the Creative Fabrica for many, many reasons, but we'll talk about it when there's downtime. <laughs> Everything else is from Design Space. So let's look at the doily. The doily is all the way in the back, okay? The one that I like is this magenta color. So from here, I'm gonna delete all these other ones. I like this one a lot because it has like a little personality to it. It's not um, just a circle, so there's like a little bit of a shape there. Um, okay, so this is the back, and I'm going to keep it similar to this size right here. 
what I do is I start with one shape and I make, it doesn't matter that this is 8.3 inches across, okay? In the end, what I wanna make sure is all my images are relative to this image right now, and then I'm gonna size it afterwards. I may make it a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. I'll take the whole thing at that point and resize it. As long as they are all the right um, size in comparison, then it's all good. All right, the next thing I'm gonna bring in is I'm gonna bring in my, my slider shaker template, okay? So I'm gonna to go to upload because I have it in here. Let's view all. Now, I have a video that shows you step-by-step step how to bring, how to make all these um, slices and how to do all the circles, but you could also go to um, Creative Fabrica and buy it for a dollar. So I've noticed that a lot of people so far have bought it. So I'm gonna assume that you too will buy it or you can go to my other video, okay? So once we have this, you, you upload it, you're gonna ungroup it. We don't need any of these words. These words are there for instructions for you guys. So this is the, the slider is the top part with a swivel. That's where the pony is, you know, going right there. The back of the slider, you have your foam circles. Now there's two if you want to add like super thick sequins. Um, if you just do glitter and you do those button sequins, you can get away with one foam circle. But if you want to make something with like a lot of height so that you can throw things in there, you're gonna want two foam circles. Um, and then you have your acetate and then the back of the slider. That's it, it's super easy, okay? So let's ungroup this and delete all of our instructions. So we don't need any of that because I'm here to tell you how to use it. <laughs> okay, so in this case, I'm only gonna do one foam circle. So I'm gonna ungroup it and there's two in here though, because this is what I like to do. So I'm gonna make the second foam circle a little bit smaller than the first one, okay? Because I kind of want my foam circle to be a little bit thicker than what I have here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my two foam circles and go to align and center it and then weld it. This will give you a thicker foam circle, okay? So let's ungroup this one. Okay, so this is the, the bottom, sorry, we should start with this. This first, this is the back. We're gonna put the foam on top, put the sequins in the middle, right? And then put our acetate on top. Then we're gonna put the back of the slider down and then the top of the slider. And then that's basically your cake topper, okay? But right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. I wanna grab these items right here. I'm gonna center it. So go to align, center, and I'm also gonna group it so that while I'm sizing everything, this is gonna move as one unit, okay? And I wanna make this bigger so it matches the, the back of my shaker. So I'm gonna make it maybe, and I'm eyeballing this. I do this every single time. So if you want less of the back circles to show, the doily to show, then you make it that big. I'm gonna make it maybe like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab these two and I'll align and center it. And I'll group it for now. So let's group it so that this whole thing moves as one, okay? So it's starting to look like our other one, right? So here are the books that came in. So the book, is just the black outline. But if you look at the book that I did, and let me grab it here, it has the white um, cardstock on the inside to make it look like real pages. So what you do is you're going to duplicate this. And let's change this to match kind of what I have, okay? So I made it um, their orange books. Then this one has the white paper. So I'm just going to go to contour and I'm going to hide all because I want this to be super strong. This is going to be easy to assemble. I'm going to change that to white and let's move the orange to the front so that you can see it the way it's supposed to be seen. Okay. So the two sit on top of each other and there's your orange books with the white paper. Okay. So I'm going to align this right now, center it. 
and then I'm going to group it because again, I don't know what the sizing is going to be, but probably smaller, right? Based on this size. So here's my book. Now the word math, just go to text. And I think I did Cricut, um, but I did bold and I just typed in math. And I did this with iron on vinyl. I love it because look how small this is going to be, right? Um, this is right now one inch, but that's not going to fit on our book. And you can see I did it as small as I could, but not so that I'm going to kill myself. And then I kind of tilted it to give myself more room. So that's going to need to be a little bit smaller. Okay. So there is math that's going to be in vinyl, um, iron on vinyl. So that's done. All right, let's look at our pony. So when you click on the pony, I wanted the handkerchief to be blue. So all you need to do is over here on your right hand side panel, you see how this is selected. It's a darker gray. So you know that this is the one that we're looking at. You can click on the handkerchief and then just go change your color. So I changed it to a dark blue. So now our horse is matching, right? So here's our horse. He's going to go and right now it doesn't matter the order, but I do, I'll bring this to the front so that I can see what it looks like with the pony in the front. But in the end, it's going to, it's going to be up to you to actually glue everything down. So, um, that's why it doesn't really matter, but I, I think that it's good to build it this way. Okay. So we've got that. Now I love, we'll do the note card next. I love this note card. Um, there's a couple things though. So if you look over here, it says um, it's going to score it. And when you score it, you need the embosser tool and I don't have that. So I'm gonna change that. Um, and here's cut, so it's gonna cut around and then you're gonna fold it into a nice little envelope. So what I did was let's look at this score. And let's go over here. So I don't have a score, but I have a deboss one. So I just did this. And then, so what it did was it made a little dent in my envelope. So it was easy for me to fold it in and it looked like, like I bought the envelope. So, all right. So that's the one thing that I would change for me. Um, now this is just the envelope. So I'm going to go to shapes and get a square. And I'm going to unlock this because this is a rectangle, right? So I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to create my insert. So I want the note to fit inside and I want my Cricut to cut it. So here's my first note. I did end up making three of these because I wanted one where Charlotte's going to write her name on it with a date. And then one's going to have something that I write and one that my husband's going to write. So Let's grab this and also center it. And right now, let's make this all a little bit smaller. And the way I did it was I grabbed this little piece knowing that I'm going to fold up my envelope. So if I kind of like this right now, then it works. Okay. If I wanted this square to be or rectangle to be a little bit bigger, I would bring this rectangle back over here and adjust the envelope and the other three note or the other two note cards at one time. Okay. So it looks like I think I'm okay with that. So um, I matched the note cards so that they were all cutting out on this cute little paper. I don't even know if that's right. Okay. I'm going to leave that there for now. And I'm going to change this to a pink. All right. Um, okay, so let's see what else we have. All right, I want to show you the apple. So the apple, I changed colors, right? Um, you can see on the right-hand side panel that this is in four pieces. It's got a full background, and then the leaves go on top. And I was too lazy to do that. So what I did was I deleted this leaf. I made this green um, and but I didn't want my seeds to be green I wanted my seeds to be black so what I did was I grabbed this one and I duplicated it then contour hide all and I don't want to deal with six super tiny seeds right so I make this whole thing black so that it's gonna sit behind that piece and then, uh, where's my other piece? 
Where is my the rest of my apple? Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this the way it is, but um, this is what I did with the apple, okay? So let's grab these items and group it because we want them to be sized accordingly and move together. So we haven't lost anything. You just can't see the white layer so you can see the black seeds through. But I like when, you know, like the seeds, for instance, I don't want to deal with six small little pieces, right? Instead, make it big. I mean, this is not that big to begin with. So the little, this guy is, oh, I can't see it. It's small, it's like an inch. So it's a small piece of cardstock, but it's gonna make the apple so much easier to deal with. All right, so let's make this one a little bit smaller. Put my apple somewhere over here. Okay, this banner, I love this banner. It was exactly the way I wanted it to be, but I didn't want it to be dad, right? So let's grab this flag, go to contour, hide all. So now I have my blank pennant, right? and I want it white and I'm going to duplicate it because what I did was I took, see if I can show you. I did an actual stick so that this thing was not going to be flimsy. I glued it to the back of the board and then here's Colts front and back. It has two pieces of the pendant. Okay. So we've got these two and again, I would, um, I would arrange or align. Um, I don't know how, let me see, because it's two pieces. All right, I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna group it together. And that looks a little bit big for my little thing. Maybe like that, a little bit bigger. Okay, and then uh, Colts is in Varsity. I love that font for anything school related. So that should be a free font. If you have, I think you need access. Yeah, you do need access. So here it is, Varsity. And we're gonna type in Colts. Kind of make it small. And again, this was iron on and I liked it because Look how small that is. Cardstock would have been really, really hard to deal with. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay. And I did that in blue. Um, okay. And then let's see, let's go grab, oh, our pencil. So I know, see, I feel like every item, there was a lot of editing, but it made really good sense to me. <laughs> All right, so this one, I let's look at the how it's broken down, okay? You have your your back layer is this green. So it's the lead and the eraser. To me, lead is black and the eraser is pink. So we're going to change that. Here is the um the wood part of the pencil and the back of this and then our top is the yellow. So what I wanted to change was I wanted this, I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to make, let's go back to our pencil and let's change this one to black. So you see, I, I like the way that looks already. <laughs> I'm gonna change this more to a brown, like a light brown. See, that looks more like a pencil to me. Okay, so this guy, what we're gonna do is, um, I took in a square and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna layer this, right? So this pencil, the way I put it together is the, the most back layer is the black lead and it's top to bottom. Then what sits on top is going to be our eraser, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm gonna slice it because my black layer is going to go down first. I'm going to ungroup this so you can see what it will look like, okay? So here's my black. Here's my eraser. I'm going to make it pink. And send to the front. Okay, so it's going to sit like that. Then my next piece is going to be this. And I'm gonna send that to the front. Um, 
gun range. I mean, you'll put it together better than this. It doesn't really matter right now. And then this goes on top. Arrange, send to the front. And it's all these little details that really makes a difference in my mind. So, you, so now we have a pencil, right? And look at this pencil. I'm gonna make myself bigger for just a second. See, that's a real pencil. It's a glittery pink. Here's my brown. I mean, it's just so stinking cute, right? All right, so here's our pencil. And now I'm going to, hold on, let me make this smaller. And then I'm gonna group my pencil. I'm gonna bring the pencil over and I had it underneath my math book. Make it a little bit smaller. And I, the way I put it in my, I didn't like this part of the books because I felt like it made it look um, not as real as the rest of the image. So I put my pencil right over it here and I felt like that really made that look like books with the pencil over it. Okay. Um, okay, here is <laughs> the um, horseshoe, right? So again, I wanted, I didn't think that the, the holes here would come through if I didn't have a backing to it. So I did want the top, I did black glitter cardstock. I'm gonna duplicate it. And on this one, I'm gonna contour and hit hide all because I want all the holes to disappear. And I made that, I think it was a silver behind, yeah. So, or like a gray. Okay, so this is going to go right here. It's go to arrange, send to the back. And let's grab these two, align, center, and then group it. So now you have like a legit horseshoe, okay? So let's put that. Now, my horseshoe is over here. I wish after I glued it, I wish I had put it more over here. So that's going to be like, I was kind of rushing. You can resize it now, maybe something like this. I'm not sure, but I didn't, I didn't like it hanging over here. It felt really unbalanced. Okay. We're almost, almost done. Um, all right. This banner, I love this banner. So this is going to say kindergarten inside it, right? I'm going to make it bigger so that fits on top over here. And that might be too big. Let's see, arrange, send to the front. So it's gonna sit in the front a little bit. Something like that. So let's see how close we are to the original. Um, I guess it's a little bit smaller in the original, but you can size it the way you want to, right? So now go to the banner over here. There's a back layer and a front layer. So I did the back layer because I wanted the words kindergarten to be in a rainbow, um, each letter being different, a different color. So, I, and I was using glitter cardstock. So I like when I'm using glitter cardstock for the second layer behind it to be regular cardstock. And white is a perfect color for it to really make the colors shine. So we're gonna do white and then I did like a blue for the banner. So I'm gonna grab the banner and change that to blue because the school colors are blue and white, but you can change it to whatever you want. Um, okay, so let's go to text and we need to type in kindergarten. And this is happy popcorn. I use this one a lot. So here we go. Now, I also know that it's, you know, it gets kind of skinny. Um, shoot, I did it in capital letters. Okay, here we go. So, if you can, so the way I did it was I kind of, I, I did the letters kind of up and down so that way I can squeeze in the letters a little bit more and make my font a little bit bigger than if I made it straight and coming across because then it would require more space in between each letter. So I, I love this font and it cuts well, but I also know some parts are really thin. So I didn't want to, you know, I want to make this as easy as possible for myself. So, um, 
It's a lot easier when the banner is also straight across this way to see how big you can make this. So first, let's see if we can do the letter spacing. Let's decrease it a little bit and see how far we can get in. Okay. Um, so this is about an inch. I wonder, give me a second. Let me pull out my ruler and see the real measurement. So my real measurement was an inch. So this will fit, um, but not all my letters will fit in there. So we can make the banner a little bit. You can unlock the banner and make it longer and out like this. There, now that should fit. Now I know if I bounce my letters, it'll fit, okay? So I'm gonna ungroup the letters. And where are all my letters? Here they are. Um, arrange and send to the front so that the letters pop up in the front, okay. And then ungroup it. And now, you know, change all your letters. So I started here and I did, I just did it in order. I changed it to red. And then you can start changing all the, all the different colors, okay? So we're just building this little guy. Um, we're, we're close to being done. Okay, so the, um, the pencil that we worked with earlier, those are the slice results. We can just get rid of that. All right, so let's look at the crayon. I ended up doing three crayons, okay? And I noticed, at, oh, originally I did a print and cut for the crayon and it just didn't look good. It wasn't very vibrant for me. So this one, I'm gonna do all black. So I'm gonna go to contour, hide all, and it's basically gonna take the space of all these blacks. So on this one, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna delete the black because now I only need the orange because it's gonna sit on top like this. Okay, so I like that one. I'm gonna duplicate it. And I think I did one orange, one purple. So I'm gonna change this one to purple. And then I'm gonna duplicate, oops, undo. I wanna duplicate the whole thing together. And I did green. So on this one, I'm gonna change that to green. Okay, I'm gonna grab all of these and I'm gonna to go to align and align the bottom, okay. And then I'm gonna group it. So it's gonna to move together as one. Um, make it a little bit smaller. And I had this over here by the books. All right, stars. So the stars, I like having the different layers. So this star here has two layers, right? So I'm gonna duplicate it and make it a little bit smaller so that now my star has four layers. Then I'm gonna duplicate this and make it a different size because you don't want things all the same size, okay? And then, so I did three sets. So just to add a little whimsy look to the whole thing. And then you can go over here and start changing the colors. So I started using the same colors that I knew I was using for the crayons, for the letters. So it was all very glittery. And I think we're almost done. So let's group one more. Sorry, let's do this. Duplicate and make this one a little bit smaller even. We'll group that one. Make sure you change the colors the way you want to. We'll group this one. This one looks to me like it's a little bit too big. And then this one I'm gonna group together and make it a little bit smaller. All right, so my first one went somewhere over here. Um, and I'm gonna move my banner back to the way it was where it's kind of like this. Oh, but hold on, let me undo that. Let's group the banner. Go something like that. 
some one stars over there. I had another star somewhere over here and then another one down here. So you can kind of see it's all grouping together, right? Now I'm going to show you what's left is the name Charlotte. Oh, and the school bus. The school bus is, is just a print and cut image. So I'm just going to go into images and see if there's a school bus one. And I'll show you if you want to do it from here or if you get the one that I got. I, the one I got, I just liked it because it had a little bit more colors than just your yellow and black. But this one looks like the one I kind of got. So let's insert that image. And because I know I didn't want to do, I wanted to have a print and cut and then some cardstock to make it look different and more polished. So let's say you like this and it went right here. Um, oh, this is already cut and print, so perfect. Um, the only thing that I would do is I would duplicate this one because I always print and cut on regular copy paper, printer paper, so it's kind of thin. So on this one, I'm gonna change to no fill and I'm gonna change it to white background. So this is gonna be white cardstock, okay? And this is gonna sit on front of it. I'm gonna tape it. Um, so that way my school bus is super sturdy. All right, so let's group this thing together as well. So align it center and then group it. And then here's our bus. Yeah, I think we have everything but the name. So in Font Lab Pad, I like using it because, um, shoot, I hope it opens up. Um, it will put all my scripty letters or words together. So let's go to File, Recent Fonts. You can see all the ones that I used recently. Uh, Feeling Sweet, that's the one I did. And I'm just gonna type in Charlotte, so it's all nice and beautiful and connected. Save as, so you save it as an SVG, okay? I've already saved it. I'm gonna go into Inkscape now. Because yeah, you have to do an offset. The offset really makes a difference in this whole thing. So we have like two steps left. We just have to do the name Charlotte, and then I'm gonna show you how to weld the name and the banner to the back so that you have a really strong back and let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see why we do this. So you can see here's the bottom of Charlotte, here's the round part, and here's the banner. And that way you have a really stable thing. Everything is on here, nothing is bending over. Um, you know, if you're gonna have something that shakes, you need to make sure nothing's gonna fall off and nothing is bending over. So it helps when you have one solid background. All right, now I can make myself smaller again, okay? <laughs> Um, let me just make this a little smaller because my recording buttons are all where I need to be. Okay, so here we go. Go to File, go to Import, and we're going to import Charlotte. And let's see if I can find her. Oh, is it under Desktop? Oh, man. All right, the... File was feeling, oh, let me go to Inkscape. Let me resave it. Uh, not Inkscape, font pattern level. Here we go. So I'm going to save as. Mm, I've got a pad in desktop. Okay. So import desktop. And it was, oh, come on. What order is this in? Oh my gosh. Okay. What is going on here? Okay. So it's FL pad and the font was feeling sweet. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this larger so you can see. Make sure that it's unlocked. So you just click on the lock button. Oh my gosh, it's not letting me do it. I don't wanna make this bigger, come on. 
I think it's frozen. Are you kidding me right now? Okay. Every other one of my videos, I show you how to do an offset. There's one specifically just for an offset. I apologize. So I'm going to go back to, can I even go back? Oh my gosh. We were almost done. That was so close. I'm so sorry. But the end of this is, okay, once you create your offset, then what you do is you grab the back layer of your offset, the back layer of the doily, the back layer of your banner, or you can duplicate, make a copy of your banner, move the copy over to the side and grab your banner, the doily and the back or the full name of Charlotte. If you make a duplicate of the Charlotte, it'll work just like the banner, okay? Move the copy of the banner and the copy of the name Charlotte all over. Then you grab those three and you weld it. That will give you your backing. So I'm so sorry. I promise a different one. We'll do a cake topper and we'll attack it next time. But um, please, if you have any comments or questions, I'm super excited because next week for the videos, I got my new cameras in. So I have an overhead camera. I have one in the front, one on the side. So the videos should give you a really clear view of how I'm assembling this. I know there were lots of questions with the perler beads and I did one with an overview with just my iPhone. So I know it's not the clearest, but it did give you a much better view. And so hopefully that all worked out. But if you have your own project, please just email me, Anne at theuselesscrafter.com, or leave your comments here, Instagram or Facebook. And if you tell me a detailed uh, project, then I can help you do it. I'll do the tutorial. And that way you still have to make it. So you're still learning. I'm not going to enable you that much, but um, I know it's hard to learn at the beginning. And then you want to do something and you don't know how to make those changes. So that's what I'm here for. Um, all right. Bye, guys. Let's see if we can end this.